Yo, we have an emergency situation, man. Manchester City are looking at Celta Vigo's Gabri Vega. This has come from top, top, top source. This is something that we think actually might happen. Um, we'll get into who is it, what teams he play for, positions he play for, costs, all that kind of stuff in a few minutes' time, man. But this is a madness. Guys, make sure you drop a like on the stream, minute. We've got over 250 people in the stream right now. Let's get those likes past 200. Hit that thumbs up button, man, if you've not done so already. As always, make sure you guys have um, subscribed to the channel as well. If you are new, make sure you hit that notification bell 
And if you want to help support the channel grow, you can become a YouTube channel member, just like Nick Cooper has done. Big up, Nick. Thank you very much for helping support the channel, mate. Um, the link is in the description, the pinned comment, and sometimes there's a join button below the video. Um, so, who is Jack Vega? Uh, not Jack Vega. Um, who is... Uh, <laughs> no. Um, that, 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 that siren noise has gone to the head like that. We don't know what's going on, isn't it? Uh, panic. Um, who is uh, Celta Vigo's Gab Rivega? What position does he play in? And where has this information come from? Earlier on today, two hours ago, Jack Garn, one of the best sources when it comes to Manchester City transfer news, has said that Manchester City are uh, monitoring Celta Vigo's Gab Rivega, plays in Spain. Apparently, he's wanted by Manchester City and Real Madrid. Looking to make a move in the summer. Manchester City and monitoring midfielder Gabri Vega. Bro, I mean, it's not. I mean, a player that I've not heard of. I mean, I, I only heard of him two hours ago. I've been doing my research, looked at scout reports, obviously done the standard YouTube compilation videos. Um, have you heard of this guy before? Well, listen, you know we don't get the alarm out unless it's huge. This is this is as big as it gets. Forget Bellingham. You know, forget Vard Skellia. It's all about Vega. Gabri, if he becomes a City player, it is all about Vega. We're going to back him to the core and gas him up like he's the biggest thing since sliced bread. But no, I, I'm not going to sit here and, and drop fake ball knowledge on you. I have never heard of Gabri Vega. I had a very quick look at his transfer marked um, profile. I thought, I, I, I saw it on Twitter, obviously, first, but I thought he was a lot younger. He's actually 20 years old, so... Mm. It's not a straightforward case of, oh, he'll come in and be a CFA or a CFG signing. Mm -hmm. If we're buying a 20-year-old who is, is highly sought after around Europe, you would think he's going to be a Manchester City first-team player. You know, Pep has plans for this kid. So is this going to be another absolute masterstroke uh, of the Manchester City recruitment team? I would like to think so. I don't think we would be going in for a kid like this that no one's ever heard of unless City saw something special in him. Uh, and also the big, th the big, big thing for me was when I looked at his transfer mark is kids versatile, man. Kids versatile. He's played holding mid. He's played attacking mid, right wing, center forward. Um, 25 games, nine goals, I think, uh, three assists. Not bad stats, man. Not bad stats for playing for Celta Vigo. So mm -hmm. should we be getting very excited? I think we can definitely allow ourselves to say this is interesting. Very interesting. Mm. Yeah, um, for people that don't know, uh, Gabri Vega, obviously he plays at Celta Vigo, he's only 20 years old, as Hugh said, uh, made his breakthrough uh, into the first team back in 2020-2021 um, season, uh, played 300 minutes, uh, sorry, played just over 100 minutes uh, across six different appearances, most of them like late minute substitute appearances, um, That was that's when he broke in, so he would have been, what, 17, 18 at the time. Uh, last season, uh, the stats are 41 uh, games played, um, only seven in La Liga, though. The rest um, was for, uh, for he was, he was, he was uh, played in like a Celta Vigo's B team, I think it was. Um, but again, got 100 minutes. However, this season has made big, big steps forward um, and has played 25 games for the La Liga side. Uh, yeah, as, as you said, scoring nine and assisting three goals in just a 1,500 minutes, which are excellent stats uh, on the numbers there. Um, yeah, he can play centre midfield, attacking midfield. Uh, he can play on the wing as well. He's also playing false nine a few times as well. So, as Hugh said, very, very versatile player. Transfer Markt has a valuation of around €30 million. Euros. Um, now, this is an interesting one because... He's got a big contract. He's contracted until 2026. And apparently Real Madrid are really, really interested um, in in, uh, Real, uh, in Gabby Vega. However, City might be able to get him at a good price because he has a release clause of £35 million, pounds, uh, around €40 million. Euros, so City could get him in. This is a super interesting signing because I've never heard of him up until today. I, I can't lie. I've never heard of this guy. Um I've gone on and done the standard stuff that you all have probably done. And if you've not, you'll all probably do it after this stream, which is you go onto YouTube and you type in Gabri Vega, um, you know, 4K highlight skills and goals and all that kind of shit to look at his play. He looks very technically gifted, which you'd expect coming out of Spain. You know what I mean? That's, that's typically what you get from the Spanish players. Very good on the ball. What I like about him most that I've, that I've seen, and again, this is only going off YouTube compilation, he seems very powerful, bro. 
He seems very powerful. When he gets the ball, he, 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 he bursts past players, which I really, really like. He's got a little bit of skill about him to beat a man. He always got his head up, scanning the play. You know, you see quite a lot of players very, very good on the ball, but the head's down all the time and they're not scanning. What makes the best players in the world the best players in the world? If you think about players like Xavi, Iniesta, David Silva, they always have the head up. You get a lot of players who are very technically gifted, but the head's always on the floor. On the, again, just going off the clips, looks like he's always scanning what's around him. You know what I mean? Who's Who can I pass the ball to when I get the ball? Gets the ball, drives forward, likes a shot. Apparently, and I'll get his scout report up and we can go through his scout report in a second. That's no problem. Um, likes it. Got an eye for goal. Likes to have a couple of long shots, which would be nice to just sort of change up our game. You know, sometimes we can be, not all the time, but sometimes we can be a little bit guilty of trying to walk the ball in the net, especially with Haaland there. Would be nice to get someone to have a couple of pop shots. And again, as we've spoken in recent streams, whether this is the guy, I don't know. But Manchester City have to be looking at the replacement for Kevin De Bruyne because Kevin De Bruyne's 32 years old um, and he's getting on. And in the next few years, we are going to need to replace Kevin De Bruyne. So could this be the guy? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe maybe could be, maybe not. But City are clearly doing their, their work on Gabri Vega, a player that's liked by all the top clubs around Europe. And it's exciting, bro. And 35 million quid. He's wanted by Real Madrid as well. Seems a high prospect. 35 million quid is a lot of money to spend on someone that you've that we've only heard of today you know it, it really is 30 35 is a lot of a lot That's of money but, yeah, yeah but you have to take into account all the context of the situation and it, well, I'm, I'm mainly taking my excitement from the fact that real madrid want them real madrid would have played against this guy a good few times they'd know what he's about mm -hmm. uh, and real madrid kind of have the pick of spain if they want one of the top players around the rest of the country they can kind of have him so if real madrid are interested in, in gabri vega there must be there must be some substance to this guy and you know what? When you look at a lot of the players we brought in over the years, that the reality is we hadn't really properly heard of. You may have heard their name thrown around, but you don't know much about them. Kevin De Bruyne is an example. Like, were we all Kevin De Bruyne geniuses when he was at Wolfsburg? No, we absolutely weren't. You had Paul Merson saying, "What are they spending fifty million on this guy for? He's a Chelsea reject." And all of a sudden, he comes in, and and now we all know Kevin De Bruyne. There's nobody who doesn't know Kevin De Bruyne. So, I'm not saying for one second this kid is the next KDB, but. I just, I'm a big fan of City's recruitment team and the scouting we've done over the years, particularly since Pep Guardiola's arrived. We seem to be great at bringing in players who are, are big prospects and plenty of them go on to be successful, whether it's at City or not. So, like I said, I'm not going to sit here and say I know a huge amount about this kid, but there's definitely stuff to be excited about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Um, I want to get the, uh, I want to get a scouting report up, actually. I think I've found a couple here that we can go through and really try and find out what this guy's strengths are. Uh, and, and really where City could utilise them. We've been linked with a lot of midfielders over the last months um, and it's probably going to continue because if you look at the Gundogan thing, you know, I'm pretty sure everyone in this stream, um, in the chat, you and myself, I right now probably think that Gundogan's leaving because he's still not can't sign a contract. If Bernardo Silva gets the bid in, he'll be gone as well. It leaves us with actually just one midfielder in Kevin De Bruyne, right? So, and obviously you've got Peroni there as well, but we're not still fully sure of what exactly is going to happen with Peroni right now. We're going to have to buy a couple of midfielders, right? So, and if they do want to go and get a Jude Bellingham and drop 130 million, maybe they will just gamble on this kid who's 35 million quid because you've got your two midfielders in Jude Bellingham and Kevin De Bruyne, of course, Phil Foden and Grealish can still play in there. And maybe they'll just say, you know what, rather than go and get a Kovacic for 50 million, who's 28 years old, and we know he can come in and do a good job. Why don't we gamble? Why don't we gamble on this kid? If 35 million quid is the clearly Manchester City scouts and CK and Pep have clearly looked at this guy and gone, he's, he's a good player. We clearly like him. Maybe they're thinking to themselves, we don't need to go and get Kovacic when we've got Grealish and Foden who can play in there. Maybe let's gamble. Maybe that's something that they're doing. Um, Big up heard Dave Rocky, by the way, with a super chat with a 10. Says, yes, yes, lads. Can't lie. I haven't heard or seen anything about him, but let's hope that he isn't another Sergio Gomez. Difficult for a young player at the age of 20 to go to a different country. Um, yeah, I mean, you're, you're in the same boat as, as us. I mean, unless you've seen Vega play, maybe against Real Madrid, Barcelona, um, or you just randomly watch Celta Vigo games, I would be very surprised if there's anyone in this stream who has actually watched um, Gabby Vega because... I mean, why would you have watched Gabby Vega? You know, as I say, unless you've watched Celta Vigo versus Real Madrid, Barcelona, or unless you're a Celta Vigo fan, I mean, I, I don't know why you'd be watching Celta Vigo. So um, most of the people in the stream are probably in the same boat. So that's why I've got the scouting report up here now, so I can go through some of the stuff. 
um, and, and see exactly what they're saying um, about about uh, Vega. I'm not going to go through it all. I'll put the uh, I'll put the full scout report in the description of the video. So if you guys want to read the full thing, because it is quite long. So I'm just going to pick out the bits that I think are worth going through. But um, I've just updated the description. If you guys actually want to see the full scout report, just click the link in the description. You can go over to the scouting app. Um, but here we go. I'm just going to go read through a little bit of um, stuff here. And, and, and Hugh, if you want to interrupt me about anything that's safe when I'm going through this, just fire in you. Um, so it says this. It says, Gabby Vega has emerged this season as uh, Bryas Mendez's natural successor and is completing an outstanding campaign. His numbers at the time of writing were six goals uh, and two assists. And of course, we know that now this season, it's actually it's actually a bit better than that. I think it was nine and three. So he's actually improved on that. Uh, and above all, his high impact on Celta Vigo's game has made him earn the tag of a future promise, catching popularity and interest of many clubs. Um, Gabriel Vega is the kind of midfielder that can make the difference in the, in, in the last metres, gifted with huge quality, vision, personality and elevated work rate. But what is most impressive about his breakthrough season is his incredible capacity towards the opposite goal. He is, um, he is having a notorious positive effectiveness for his young age and an inexperience in professional football, asserting his good striking ability. In fact, he's one of the midfielders who tries more shots per 90 minutes, uh, reflecting that he trusts his own shooting abilities, even from long distances. And this is something that I've not read this scout report. I read a different one before. And that scout report also said, that he likes a shot. If you go and look at his YouTube compilation highlights, he likes to have a shot. And typically, his shots are actually pretty good. You know, I mean, it's on highlights, so obviously I'm not going to show him blazing one into Rose Ed, right? But I like the, the, the way he, he strikes the ball. Um, it also says a remarkable aspect of his game is his tendency to always to look forward in and off the ball. Again, this is something that I spotted separate to this scout report when I was watching it. If you watch it, watch the clips of him. He's always scanning where he was receiving the ball just before he received the ball. He does what, like, not compared to Messi, but Messi did it, Xavi did it, and yesterday did it, Silva did it. The top players, these great midfield players and attacking players, they're always scanning what's around them. So when they receive the ball, they know how to pass the ball, or who to pass the ball to straight away. Um, he says it always looks uh, vertically when he receives the ball, looking to advance either with powerful carries. Again, I didn't read the scout report, man. This is a different Sky report than the one I read before. And this is saying the exact same thing that I saw on the on the, um, on the the YouTube compilation. He carries the ball forward, looking progressively to, to um, for, for passing lanes. He has great vision and quality to filter the last pass, triggering potential one-on-one -on -one situations against the goalkeeper or find forward between the lines, as well as a huge stride that allows him to take on rivals um, trying to enter their opponent's penalty area again. This, this scouting report seems to be exactly what I've seen on the highlights, man. When I, when he gets the ball, bro, you need to watch these highlights, man. I'm saying this to everyone in the chat. The way he gets the ball and moves the ball forward, it's kind of like Yaya Toure-esque, but with, with, a, with a lower centre of gravity and a bit more acceleration. Um, obviously, Yaya was like a steam train when he got going. But it just seems like when he gets the ball, powers forward, man. He's got this real sort of strength about him. It seems like no one can knock him off the ball. I'm not going to go through the rest of the scout report because I want you to go and read it for yourself. And there is a lot there. And I'll just read the fucking article to you. Um, but yeah, I mean, from what I've seen off the scout report, what I've seen off the clips, certainly looks like an interesting player. And whilst I get what you're saying a minute ago, Hugh, about the, the fee, 35 million quid these days. I mean, look at Alvarez. What's that? 20 million. Look how he is. Perone, 10 million. He looks like he could potentially work into something. I think we're moving into a transfer market where you kind of have to take these gambles. Otherwise, you're paying 60, 70, 80 million pound for average players nowadays. I think you're paying 35 million pounds to beat Real Madrid to the player. I think that's what it is. Um, if Real Madrid weren't interested, you could probably get this player for 10, 15 million pounds. That's the reality. Dennis in the chat makes a, an interesting point. I don't know how true or false it is. Maybe you could look into it. Apparently, he is the La Liga player of the month. I don't know if it's right now or, or if it's last month, but apparently he's won a La Liga Player of the Month. And listen, based off your scouting report, he sounds to me like he's a very commanding midfielder for his age as well. He's very commanding. True. And it sounds like he's True. one of the possibly the leaders of, of his dressing room at Celta Vigo. Please don't take anything I'm saying as gospel people. I'm gen genuinely just basing my, my, my assumptions off the scouting report. But from what the report says... He sounds like he's one of the leaders uh, and that he's one of the, the chief chance creators. He's one of the, the drivers of the team, if you like. And something I've always been very keen on 
Uh, what Manchester City is goals from midfield. I like midfielders to chip in with goals. And if this guy has an eye for goal and an enthusiasm to pull the trigger when when you know he feels he can and he backs himself, sounds good, man. He sounds like a he sounds like a player I would be interested in. And I think you're spot on. I think you're spot on. You're not going to get any of these hidden gems unless you take the risk, unless you take the gamble and you pay the money. Works out. We're sitting there with a Kevin De Bruyne type player going, wow, we paid 35 million for Gabri Vega. Unbelievable. Or else we could be sitting there going, oh shit, we paid 35 million for this guy. That was, that was a waste of cash. But mm -hmm. you don't get to know <laughs> until you take the punt. And you it do. would be annoying. It would be really annoying now if Madrid went to get him and he slams it in the league next season for Real Madrid or in the Champions League. We'd be saying, fuck, we should have spent 35 million. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's true. And by the way, just to confirm, that information is correct. He did actually, I've just checked it. I fact checked this information. He did get La Liga Player of the Month for February. So, you know, I mean, he must have done pretty good this month. And that's in a league. That's in a league with the likes of Vinicius, Pedri, Gavi, Benzema, all these players he's in the same league with. And he got Player of the Month. He must have had a smashing month in February. I want to see that month. You know what? We may start doing Celta Vigo watch alongs. <laughs> yeah man it's uh look it's a, certainly an interesting one this and of course people who've come into the stream late asking where this source has come from it's come from jack gone um very very good um source when it comes to manchester city transfer news and transfer rumors so um he doesn't say city have made a bid it doesn't say city are close it just says city are monitoring um gabri vega but he doesn't normally put shit out unless he's heard something interesting as well, again, a little bit more sketchy on this, but apparently Sam Lee in a recent podcast said Manchester City are looking at, apparently, I quote this, but I don't know if it's true, a random Spanish midfielder. I mean, this is how more, how more random do you get? The guy plays for Celta Vigo, he's 20 years old, no one's ever heard of him, right? So maybe he's, I don't know if that's been confirmed, if Sam Lee's talking about the same player, but he's apparently made reference to a Spanish midfielder that City are interested in. Jack Gorn coming out with it today that, that Gabri Vega is on the list. When Jack Gorn speaks, you listen, people. You listen. Mm, and he's right. coming out. Yeah, it's true, isn't it? You know what I mean? You listen to certain journalists, others, you know what I mean? You're kind of like, all right, yeah, we'll see what happens. When Jack Gorn speaks, we listen. Like I say, he's not said City are going to make a bid. He's not said City have got this guy in a bag. Nothing like that. He just said City are monitoring the deal. And uh, yeah, and, and there's a release clause of 35 million quid. So we'll have to wait and see what happens on this one. I'm going to do some more research on this guy, to be honest with you, because for me, um, I think he's a player that I would really, really like to watch more of because based on the highlights that I've seen, looks really, really good. But um, yeah, man, he, he certainly looks interested. And of course, City are going down this route now of a bit of a blend. Of course, they bought Grealish for big cash. They got Haaland. The, the fee wasn't big cash, but I'm pretty sure with agents' fees and the wages that he's on, still big cash. But they also want to blend it with these Perone players, Alvarez, and maybe Gabri Vega is the next one that they're looking at. So uh, interesting times. And of course, we've said all along that March, April, these are the months where transfer rumours pop off, isn't it, bro? Yes, yes, exactly. And yeah, that's kind of new as well. It's just been a thing in recent years, hasn't it? It used to be like you don't hear much about it until the summer. Genuine, until the window opens, then it all starts to pop off. City, particularly just because we solely focus on them because we support the club, seem to be looking to start, you know, engaging in business uh, as early as March um, that these, these days. So if Jack Gorn's saying it, um, as, as Lewis said, if Jack Gorn speaks, you listen. Um, mm -hmm. But on, on this one, I think you made a really good point earlier on which was uh, about the Bellingham and signing other players too. If we per if we pursue this Gabri Vega guy and spend 35 M's on him, it makes me slightly more confident that City are going to push very hard to get Jude Bellingham. Agreed. If we had have gone and say, you know, if, if, if Jack Gone had a set tonight, Agreed. City pushing really hard for McAllister, willing to spend 90 odd million, I'd be kind of saying to myself, that's Agreed. a bit of a dampener. That's a bit of a dampener in our pursuit of Bellingham. But if City are saying... This Vega guy, we're willing to spend 35 M's on him. We're also going to go spend big dough on Jude Bellingham. So I think, you know what? It would be a great summer if we got both those in in the midfield. If we were to lose one of Gundo or Bernardo, hopefully not both. But if we were to lose one of them and retain one, get in this young kid, Vega, who sounds like he's got big prospects, and get in a Jude Bellingham, the midfield is looking strong. The midfield is looking strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, completely agree with that point. Again, City surely City wouldn't be going for Gabri Vega um, 
if uh, you know as, as a sort of third option. I mean, unless this is just a CF CFG signing, which it might be, but it's thirty five million quid for a CFG signing. You got to ask yourself the question. You know what City paid for CFG signings before? Well, we bought Douglas Louise. I think that was quite a bit of cash. Um, we bought other players around the 10, 12 million quid mark. 35 million quid. I mean, is that where we're at now with CFG? Is the CFG pumping that much cash out now that it can start spending 35 million pounds on CFG signings? I don't believe that's true. And I, I 100% agree. You know, I think that the fact that Gabri Vega is being talked about here um, indicates that Manchester City's prime target is, is, is likely to be successful. But in, in, in all fairness, just to give that sort of flip side, the prime target might not be Bellingham. It might be McAllister. But if it is yeah. McAllister, they would have distanced themselves away from Bellingham, wouldn't they? So, they were, you know, we would have heard in the press from Jack Gorn, from, from, from Sam Lee, that City are distancing themselves away from Bellingham. So I completely agree with that comment that you just made. Uh, and I think it's, 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 very, it's very good signs that the Jude Bellingham thing is, is, is on track. I also think it, spell, it probably spells the end for at least one of, if not both, of James McAtee and Tommy Doyle. It would suggest to me that City have absolutely no plans uh, of really giving either of these two kids a, a proper chance. So I don't know how you feel about that. I agree. Um, for me personally, I've said now for a few years that in my personal opinion, I didn't I didn't think as, as, as much as I wanted it to happen and as much as I raped Tommy Doyle, you've got to be... You got to be real, and I don't think he's quite good enough to play at Manchester City. This is my view. Maybe, maybe in a few years of development, maybe that things can change, right? For, and I said this morning on this morning stream, football changes quickly, right? And you can go from one opinion to the other. It's not flip flops. You just change your opinion. Um, McAtee, on the other hand, I think he plays. And what, what, one thing I would say about that, I do think he was hindered in the sense that, like, is this midfielder where is he a DM? Is he a centre mid? Is he an eight? He's probably not, not an eight, but is he like a DM? Is he an out-and-out out DM? Um, or is he more of a centre-mid? It's a bit, a bit tricky for him. With McAtee, there's a little bit more hope for me in McAtee, but I just feel that he probably will will move on again. Um, so, yeah, but, you know, the, the lads have done really well for themselves. We always say when I do academy streams with Gavin, me and Gavin are on the academy. In fact, we need to get an academy stream booked in, hopefully this week or next and um, we speak about the academy players, what's most important for them is that they forge a career in the game. That's what it's about, man. You know what I mean? It's not about we want these players to be playing for Manchester City. Of course we do. But for these young lads, we want them to have a career in the game. That's what it's about. And City will do well financially out of both of them. I, I, I'm pretty sure we'll get 30, 35 million plus for, for both of them combined. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. I, I think it's a sad situation, but um, we'll have to see. I mean, McAtee, I mean, some people, a couple of people in the chat say McAtee probably is good enough. I think McAtee... Could be given a go and see how he's about. Um, but where? Where's he going to get to give him the chance? If we've got Kevin De Bruyne, right, you're going to get this Vega in. You've still got Peroni. And you're going to be getting probably Bellingham or McAllister or whoever the other guy is. That's four midfielders. Where's he going to get the chance? Look at Cole Palmer. Guy never plays, man. And he has less competition in the midfield. So it might just be in the best interest to sell McAtee, potentially with a buyback clause. Um, because he's not going to get given the game time. I would personally give him the chance. I would have given Tolson Adabayoro a chance. I butchered his name there. Uh, I would have given Makati a chance. I would have given Borges a chance. I would have given Mabude a chance. I would have maybe give Jay Charles some minutes as well, just to see what he's cooking. I would give players chances, but we've not really done that over the last few years, and I don't see that changing with either Doyle or Makati. So that's that's where we're at. Um, Super Chat's been up on screen a long time from Chase. He says, uh, we need guys who can carry the ball like Yaya used to and feed Haaland and Alvarez. He could be a cheap alternative to Jude. I'll pair the two of them. Uh, and uh, he's got the flames there as well. Yeah, potentially, bro. You know, we need... To, one thing that I've complained about this this year about our midfield, it's very slow. It's an ageing midfield. And even our youngest midfielder there, Bernardo Silva, is not the fastest of guys, right? So... We need to inject a little bit of life. You know what I mean? We need to get the shock things out. You know what I'm thinking when a patient's fucking about to, you know, about to yeah. die off. Yeah, you yeah, need to put the fucking shockers on our midfield and go boom, like that. You know what I mean? And, and get rid of the 30 year olds who, or not necessarily get rid of them. That sounds a bit disrespectful, but, you know, maybe get rid of, rid of one of them and bring in a younger midfielder with a little bit of energy, a little bit of pace, just to give us a little bit more life in that midfield. And I think that's what City are looking to do. And it's possible 
it's highly possible that we will lose both Gundogan and Bernardo Silva. Not something necessarily that I want to see happen, it might must add. I, I, Gundogan's one of my favourite City players. I love Gundogan and I like Bernardo Silva. But it's likely at this moment in time that they're both looking to leave. Um, and if City, and they, if they do leave, I do think the way to go potentially might be to go for some youth players. But we've also got to look at our team and go, Haaland's young, Foden's young, Alvarez is young, Jude Bellingham's young, if we get him. Um, <laughs> this Vega's young. You know, we've got a very young team. So, you got to just be careful with that. I mean, I know you've got Kevin De Bruyne, Mahrez and that in there, yeah, but you you got you have to be careful. You need some experience in it when you're going for those title races. That's that's <clears> what <throat> I said in our um, in our Kyle Walker video the other day. Go watch that, people, if you haven't done so already. It's a very good conversation. I said that City should be careful uh, with getting rid of players like Kyle Walker too quickly or, or all of them at once, if you like, because you, you do need the experience. You do need to carry over that that winner's DNA as much as possible when you are refreshing your team. You know, it, it needs to be a balance of refreshing and retaining the two big oars to have success. Refresh and retain, if you ask me. But yeah, they're definitely, need, I think you're spot on in the midfield. Absolutely. Um, if we don't want to, an entire collapse in performances the way Liverpool have this season, the midfield needs to be refreshed and it needs to be refreshed this summer or else mm. um, next season could, we could slow down massively. And if we thought the inconsistencies in performances were bad this season, they could be a lot worse next season. So Bellingham, yes, absolutely spot on. He could be a guy that he, or he will be if he comes in, a guy that will come in and add straight away, I would think, at least a decent impact. Vega sounds like a good prospect. And who knows, maybe a McAllister or, or I don't know, Mount or someone, Madison. The, the thing is options. as well, bro, you, you only have to look, you only have to look towards Liverpool and look at their midfield and look what they've allowed to happen at Anfield. They've mistreated their midfield, they've let that midfield rot over the last few years through lack of investment into the midfield. And now look at the state of it. It's fucking horrible. You know what I mean? It's, it's disgusting. they got players like Fabinho, who's now shit. Henderson, who's old. Uh, Harvey Elliott, I think, playing there. He's, he's, he's not the best. You know what I mean? Like You've got to keep improving that midfield, man. You've got to keep investing. You cannot allow... To, you cannot allow at this football club what happened to Liverpool because if that midfield stops working at the whole foundation of our football stops because everything runs through that midfield. Defensive transitions, midfield. Attacking transitions, midfield. Dominating possession, midfield. It's all midfield. If we let it rot, which I'm sure we won't do because we're a better run club than Liverpool. We have more money to spend than them as well. Then we should be fine. We've got to make sure that you, you keep investing <coughs> in the midfield. Um, big up Lorenzo. Uh, he says uh, he wants us to invest in a midfielder, but he wants us to go for McAllister. He says McAllister is a proven Prem player. Let's go get him. Says uh, says Lorenzo. I mean, there's a lot of people who agree. A lot of people want McAllister, bro. A lot of people want McAllister, and I don't mind McAllister. I just, I just don't know if I back the transfer fee. I don't know. And maybe there's a little bit of English bias there for me. I don't know. But um, towards Jude Bellingham, not not McAllister. Um, but yeah, you know, he's a great player. He really is. I mean, don't get an Argentina's team if you're not if you're not good, doing it. So, no, I like yeah. McAllister, man. I think McAllister's a good player. But we we did a stream of him last week, and I said the the figures that would be um, required probably to get McAllister don't appeal to me. They don't appeal to me, um, especially while we're in pursuit of Duke Bellingham. I think the idea of getting Bellingham and McAllister in the same summer is probably uh, unrealistic. But if we were to fail in our pursuit of Bellingham. I would definitely turn my attention to McAllister and, and be much more open to it. But Bellingham is priority number one. But you're right. You're right overall. City have been experts in, in refreshing before disaster strikes. You know, uh, when you look at the transfers we've done over the years, you know, we brought in Rodri when Fernandinho was still primed and peaking uh, and he played as an understudy and now look at him. We've done it with other players too. You bring players in who are ready in a year or two's time or six months time when things are about to collapse so the collapse doesn't affect the performances and your, your chance of winning silverware so this is this is it this is it this is refreshing before genuine disaster strikes we don't want to go into a season that liverpool have just had and by making that point you pissed off quite a few liverpool fans in the chat bro Hello? yeah i've seen some liverpool fans saying are you joking man city better club than liverpool imagine you're not a better run club than liverpool though not a club that's let their midfield completely rot Bro, I'm is, with you. I'm with you, but the, the, the what what, fans, what possible Liverpool fans are saying that Liverpool a better run than Manchester City? I mean, they've completely allowed their midfield to just absolutely die. 
is what they've done. And, that, you know, how can they possibly say that? that I mean, that, I thought that wasn't controversial. Fucking hell, most Liverpool fans agree that the midfield's shit and that they should have signed someone five years ago. They signed one, one midfielder, I think, in the last five years, Cater. It's um, so, Queen, Queen Katie in the chat. Queen Katie's giving the smoke and the, the City Extra Army are giving it back to her, so you don't yeah, need to worry about it too much. Rise up, City Extra Army, innit? Defend yeah. our names! <laughs> 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 Yo, big up people. Um, Gabby Vega, Manchester City are looking at him. It's come from a top, top source, Jack Gaul. If he speaks, you listen. Not saying it's going to happen. He's just saying City are looking at him and it's something that serious, City are clearly seriously considering doing. He has a re- release clause of 35 million quid. So we'll have to keep our eye on that one. It sounds like something that might actually happen um, and it could be quite interesting. Big up to uh, Nick Cooper, Dave Rocky, Chase and Lorenzo for these chats and membership. Appreciate that. Um, we've got a YouTube short coming out a little bit later on. Uh, it's a pretty interesting one as well. It's uh, Keep, Bench uh, and Sell and Hugh Quizzes Jordan. So keep your eye out for that one. Make sure you join us again for tomorrow for some more streams. And guys, have a great night, man. Peace out. See you later.